All right, today I am working on the 2004 A8L. I've had this car a couple months now. When I first bought it, there was some extra parts in the trunk, and this was one of the extra parts. I didn't think much about it, but it's a Audi factory part. It ended up being a uh, cam sensor, which this is the used one. Didn't think a whole lot about it, and uh, check engine light's been coming off and on for the last couple months, and I scanned it with my uh, pocket scan scanner, just a cheap, like, uh, $100 thing from AutoZone or whatever, and it had a uh, P0010 for cam sensor code in it, so... So that was a screenshot of the P0010 from the uh, pocket scan. Anyway, I did a full VCDS uh, VAGCOM scan on it, and it came up with a P1526 code, which is camshaft position actuator solenoid shorted to battery plus or shorted to voltage. So as you can see by that screenshot there, there was actually a uh, 17934 code, which is the Audi factory designation for that code also to aid in diagnostics. So I'm not too familiar with these engines. My 07 has the FSI motor in it, and this is just the standard 4.2. I'm not sure what designation they give this one, but I was gonna show you a couple of the differences here and how you can tell it other than uh, one says FSI and one doesn't, but this motor here has a uh, timing belt still, and the FSI is a timing chain, which is actually on the back of the motor, and I'll show you that here in a minute, but this motor also has, still does have timing chains. So under this part of the camshaft cover here, there is a, a small chain that connects the intake and exhaust cams, and then on the other side, it's actually on the back of the motor, so this connector here is for the bank two camshaft position actuator solenoid. And then on the back, when I get all this taken apart, I'll show you that, but there is actually another one of those on the back. So it's got the belt connecting the cams to the crank and then the chain connecting the cams together. And there's a little solenoid that rocks back and forth. And then this guy here sits under there on the intake cam and then vice versa on this other side and this one might actually be on the back i'm not sure i've never had that apart but anyway i'm going to walk over here and show you the fsi motor which i believe came out in 07 which is what this car is so fsi but the main difference here is you'll notice there's no timing belt cover so everything is on the back here so if you were to do timing chains on this car, the engine has to come out. And it's quite a uh, complicated setup if you've ever seen a picture of that. The other main difference that you can tell is uh, it's got these high pressure fuel pumps. And that's the main distinguishing factor with this motor. I believe it's uh, 15 more horsepower over the other motor. This is 350 horsepower, but this is because it's direct injected. And that's the main difference there. All right, so I've got this all taken apart. You've got to remove the uh, air intake duct and the box. I just took it off as one piece. There's a seven millimeter on the back side of that for the throttle body, and then just like five or so Phillips bits. And here is the back cam actuator solenoid. I've got that unplugged. You just squeeze these. And here's the front. I've got my jumpers on here and as you can see it's 13.0 ohms so i just wanted to compare that so i'm going to go ahead and put these on the back solenoid and see what we have and i'm doing this one-handed here so connect that and that and that one is 2.9 ohms so i'm thinking the solenoid shorted here so i think what i'm going to do is 
There's just two Torx bolts on that. I think I might try swapping it with this front one and going and driving it and seeing if the code changes sides of the motor, which I'm thinking it's going to. I was kind of expecting that to be a lower number, but it's uh, definitely a lot lower than the bank two side. So I'm gonna pull that out and see what happens. All right, I pulled the uh, torques out. There's two T25s and this is all that the solenoid, is, solenoid was. So front one here pulled those two screws out and I'm gonna go ahead and swap these. Looks like they go on one way. So I'm gonna put that back on and get it bolted down and uh, I'm gonna go drive it. All right, so I switched the timing actuator solenoids from bank one to bank two and I just ran my VCDS scan here. And as you can see now we've got a 17942 P1534 on bank two. So the problem followed the solenoid, so I am going to go ahead and order a new timing actuator assembly and uh, scavenge the solenoid off that. And uh, it's actually gonna be easier to install now because it's on the front side of the motor. And we'll put that in and uh, hopefully that's gonna solve our problem here. So I wanted to point out when I was going back together with this uh, air intake on the back of the motor here, you'll see this vacuum line there is a uh, solenoid back here. I think this is like a vacuum solenoid for the EVAP system or something. Um, I didn't see it and broke that nipple off there. Uh, probably my biggest complaint about working on German cars is the uh, plastic they use on these things is horrible. You just breathe on it and it breaks. But anyway, just wanted to point that out to be careful. I didn't see it and uh, snap that off. So now I'm buying a uh, solenoid here. So I wanted to point out when I was going back together with this uh, air intake on the back of the motor here, you'll see this vacuum line. There is a uh, solenoid back here. I think this is like a vacuum solenoid for the EVAP system or something. Um, I didn't see it and broke that nipple off there. Uh, probably my biggest complaint about working on German cars is the uh, plastic they use on these things is horrible. You just breathe on it and it breaks. But anyway, just wanted to point that out to be careful. I didn't see it and uh, snap that off. So now I'm buying a uh, solenoid here. All right, the uh, 4.2 liter VVT timing chain actuator mechanism thing came in. Uh, I actually got this off eBay for like... 90 bucks. I think it was over 800 on Audi's website, but uh, all I need is the solenoid and it apparently is not available separately. So I'm hoping it's the same thing. I kind of briefly check the numbers that looks good and everything, but I think all this thing really does, it's got like a piston that goes back and forth here and adjusts the uh, exhaust to the intake camshaft separately just by pushing and lengthening or shortening on one side. Um, I did check the ohms on this solenoid and it's about 13 ohms, which is uh, not the same as the other side, but it's definitely where it should be instead of the one that was like two to three ohms. So I'm gonna pull this solenoid off and uh, install it on the, what is the driver side bank now because I switched those solenoids to the other side and we will see what happens. All right, I got the solenoid put back in here just now. As you can see, it uh, it's almost May and it snowed like four inches last night. Um, just word of caution, this uh, little green seal there, when I pulled the other one out, it actually stayed on the solenoid. So I had to pull it back out and make sure that seal went in there because it probably would have been leaking oil. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna plug this back in, snap that on and uh, put all the covers back on and clear the codes out and go test drive it. All right, we're out on a test drive right now. I cleared the codes. The check engine light has stayed off. It's actually running a lot better. And uh, yeah, I think we fixed this one. Pulling on to Highway 93. Uh, thanks for watching.